What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. In this week's episode, we're gonna be talking about patina. We got three scenarios set up here. For starters, we got a bare metal door. We're gonna show you how to achieve a patina starting from nothing, which is great because you can be as creative as you want. You can pick any colors off the shelf and go at it. Then over here, you have a painted square body tailgate. If you buy yourself a truck, you're not totally happy with the way the paint looks. You might have scratches and dents. Maybe you just want to get yourself a patina paint job. So we're going to show you how to achieve that with a fully painted part. And then behind us, we have a 1963 International Travel Hall where we went ahead and already done some panel patches. So we're going to show you how to match an existing patina to make it look cohesive. Let's get started with this 1965 C10 door. We're going to go ahead and start a faux patina from scratch. The first step of this process is to remove any grease or wax. You want a clean surface when you're gonna adhere paint to metal. I've chosen to use Poppy Patina Wax and Grease Removal. They have a lot of awesome products. When you're talking about patina, we'll talk about that stuff a little later in the episode. So on this counter, we got store-bought aerosol cans. We got a nice rust-colored white, gray, and black primers. This is gonna be my top coat, which is a colonial red. Definitely gonna to wanna to protect yourself. Then we got some sanding goodies. So in this application, we're basically just gonna be using a Scotch-Brite pad. We'll show you guys a little later on getting down and dirty and really getting the paint off with some of these uh, 120 and 220 grits. Then over here is a solution that I'm gonna mix up. And this is basically a vinegar, peroxide, and salt solution that will take your shiny metal and instantly create patina. And then of course, your final step is gonna be your clear coat. So in this application, we're gonna be spraying on the matte clear. Now that I got the door degreased, we'll go ahead and move on to the next step, which is applying your first base coat. We got our first coat down. This is a black primer. This is gonna be making sure we have good adhesion onto our bare metal door. This is also gonna be great for a nice black undertone when we go sanding it back. Next step is I'm gonna use this red primer and throw a light coat on it. I'm not gonna to go too crazy. I'm gonna let this go ahead and dry for about 30 minutes and I'm gonna apply the top coat, which will be a colonial red. Then we'll get to sanding and show you guys the patina. So now that my top coat is cured, now we're ready to begin the process to weather this door. Just be creative. There's no right or wrong. However, in my opinion, you don't want to create patina that looks completely fake. Google patina, get some references, see what really gets worn. Like this edge right here would definitely take a beating from sun and rain, as well as this whole surface. You're not gonna get a whole lot of worn and weathered paint on surfaces that don't hit sun, like in here. Maybe there's dents, maybe your door took a, took a beating on the side over here. Maybe you wanna give a little patina in this area. Let's get some sanding going on. I'm gonna start with a 220. What I don't wanna do is have to add more red paint if I don't like it. So that was my first pass with a 220. It took the gloss sheen off of it. Some of the paint in some of these heavier areas wasn't 100% cured and kind of clumped up, but that's actually kind of cool because it adds a texture. You know, when you think about old trucks, old cars from the 60s, 50s, 40s, there's probably been a bunch of paint jobs on it. So this texture kind of gives it even more of a unique antique feel. Then I'm gonna come back and get some more down to metal. And then after that's all done, I'm gonna show you guys how to make that metal turn into rust immediately. But first, let's talk about this week's sponsor, Omaze. This week, we're excited to be working with Omaze to offer you a chance to win a Velocity Ford Bronco. Go to omaze.com salvage for your chance to enter. Omaze is a fundraising platform changing the way we donate to our charities. Their site has an array of organizations you can support, like the LA Children's Hospital and even Make-A-Wish Foundation. What makes Omaze different is that not only do you get to support your favorite charities, you also are entered into the sweepstakes 
for some really, and I mean really awesome prizes. One of our favorite is the Velocity Bronco Sweepstakes, supporting the Boys and Girls Club of America. Now through September 10th, you can donate and be entered for a chance to win a 4x4, 430 horsepower, coyote swapped Velocity Ford Bronco. Omaze is making it exciting to support your charities. So head over to www.omaze.com salvage to help support the amazing work of the Boys and Girls Club of America. Now let's get back to this patina. I got this door pretty much where I want it to be. You know, you could go more, you could go less. It's basically up to you, man. That's the best part about it. Be as creative as you want. So, took the paint down, then I sort of blended it in with a 220, and then I went to the coarse scotch bright and the fine scotch bright. So that kind of feathers the red down with the undertone, which is the black. So the next step is I'm gonna show you guys how to speed up the rust process. So get the shiny metal to oxidize, and then we can clear coat it and it locks it all in. All right, so this is the household goodies that you'll need to speed up that rust process. So we got a hydrogen peroxide. So we're gonna use about four ounces, five ounces to about 15 ounces of white vinegar. And how about a cup of salt? Get yourself a nice clean empty spray bottle. Get all this mixed up. We'll go over to that door and spray it. Simple, man. Spray this stuff on. Almost immediately turns brown. I don't know if you can see that. I wanna try to hold it up straight like this so that the, the water will drip off it. If you lay it flat, you'll end up getting the water dripping back the other way, which obviously gravity would prevent that. So that would look super unrealistic. All right, so last night I let the door sit with the vinegar patina solution. This area kind of came out pretty cool. I like all the textures. The bigger area, it just kind of looked a little plain to me. So I've done this in the past. I soaked these rags with that solution and I let it sit overnight. I've done it on these side view mirrors on Cha-Ching. I did the same technique. I laid a rag on them, set them out overnight and it gives it a nice texture, really makes it look weathered and old and rusty. So let's see what we got over here with this. I'm looking at it for the first time, just like you guys. <clears throat> so let's see. Oh yeah. So check that out, man. You get a really nice texture from the rags and it really, really looks old and weathered. So I'm pretty stoked with the way that came out. I'm gonna come back through with my fine Scotch-Brite and I'm gonna go over the slat area on the door just kind of clean up some of these little drip marks. All right guys, I'm super stoked on the way this door came out. It literally looks like it sat in somebody's farm for the last 30 years, getting rained on and sun. So, last step for this is to throw a poppy's clear on it but I'm gonna wait for the rest of these parts to be done and just do them all at once. So I'm gonna jump over to that square body tailgate. Let's say in this case, you buy yourself a square body on Craigslist Marketplace and you're a little less than stoked about the finish of the paint. We're gonna embellish the patina on this and make it look more rustic, which in my opinion is cool. So I'm gonna start with just a scotch bright pad and some water and start going at it. That's my first pass on the tailgate. This is kind of where you'd be shutting your tailgate so that gets pretty worn. This is the top edge where your sun would beat on it. So I weathered that little area. You have different tones underneath. A rust color here and then a black primer, I would say, or a brown. Here is again another area where your sun would hit. On areas where you don't get a lot of wear and tear and, and oxidation, like flat edges that don't really see the sun, I didn't go heavy on those areas. I just hit it with a fine Scotch-Brite. So if you go to your local hardware store or paint shop, you'll see different Scotch-Brites. The gray is usually fine. The red is a little more coarse. And then my first pass on the parts where I really wanted it to war, I used a 220 grit on my DA. So this will get your paint off and down to the metal. 
and then I sort of start blending it out. So I'll use the coarse first, go over the whole thing, and then I use the fine to kind of blend it. So that way you don't have a huge transition between the raw metal and the painted metal. It feathers it out and gives it a real organic, realistic look. I'm pretty happy with this. Wherever this raw metal is, what I'm gonna do again is I'm gonna make it rust very quickly and then we'll be able to add a clear coat on it which will lock it all in and protect it from any further damage. So I'm gonna move on to fixing a panel on the travel all so I can show you guys how to match patina. This is a uh, international harvester travel all that we picked up from Texas. This is gonna be a new shop build, a shop truck that we're gonna be building for LS Fest East, which is only two months away. We have a new motor going in it. There's a whole bunch of metal repair that we're gonna have to do on it. Look at all that Swiss cheese up there, boy. We're gonna show you guys how to try and match an existing paint or patina. So this is real patina. This thing's from 1963. I'm pretty sure it's never seen paint ever since. see we got all kinds of different things going on so I'm gonna have to spray this try to kind of match it as best as possible also I have this driver's side corner I'm gonna repair this section here obviously we're not repainting the whole truck it's gonna stay patinaed like that so we're gonna need to try and sort of match it so it just doesn't stick out like a sore thumb all right my buddy Rich is here and he brought his handy dandy color swatch book so you can go through here and pick out something that's gonna match man this is one way to do it I mean that looks good enough for me what do y'all think I think you need to get to your shop and make me some paint I'll hop to it. all right bro thank you gloves if I was you because ah. boy let me tell you if you got any cuts it burns like a mother that's what I know now so we'll let this dry for a few minutes and uh, we should be ready to go ahead and do our clear coat everything else is ready so I let this core support sit out for a good couple hours. I resprayed it a couple times. I didn't get the same oxidation or rust look on this as I did some of the other parts. I'm pretty sure this has a galvanized coating on it, which prevents it from rusting. It did kind of oxidize it a little bit, maybe kind of ate away at the paint. We got some cool dripping marks over here, which I'm gonna leave. The new section that I did all the repairs definitely shows some rusting already, so that's good. The front fender that we did this repair here came out really cool, man. You know, I did lay that towel on it overnight, so it did give it a nice texture. Honestly, like you probably wouldn't even really be able to tell that there's a, a patch panel in here. This whole piece is very rusted and patinaed. You got some black paint marks or something dripped down it. I'm gonna leave all that. Just that's all that extra character that we like. I'm gonna lay these out here. I'm gonna go mix up the Poppy's patina gloss for these two parts. So the International Harbor is gonna be patina, but gloss which is something I've never done before. So I'm excited to see how that turned out. If you guys remember that Bel Air we did a couple weeks back, that had a very deep gloss clear coat. Everybody seemed to like it. So we're gonna try it. So what we got here is Poppy's wipe on gloss clear coat lasts for years. That's what we want. So the Poppy's patina is gonna seal in all the patina work that we did whether it's the original patina or the faux patina. It'll stop it from continuing to grow, the rust to grow, so it does prevent the panels from just rotting away. So this is the matte clear, this is the gloss. For the manufactured faux patina, I'm gonna do a combination of both, so it'll give it a satin look. And then for the travel all, like I said, I'm gonna use just the gloss. So let's get this mixed up and get it on those parts and see how it looks.
So here's our finished products, guys. I'm pretty stoked on the way it turned out. This was our raw metal door, as you all seen, and it was a completely manufactured faux patina. There's an area right here, when you're using aerosol cans, the different chemicals, sometimes they react, and I got a little bubble action, but this happened to me on Cha-Ching too, and what I did was you know, I just sanded it down and kind of left it. It just added more character, so don't be afraid of that kind of stuff. Moving on to our travel out parts. As you guys seen, this is a brand new metal panel off through here on the bottom of the core support. So I would say this is a go. I think it's gonna look pretty, pretty killer on the truck. And then our front fender. This came out awesome, looks really gnarly. Pretty stoked with the way the texture came out. Overall, this, this truck is gonna look mint, man, when it's all done. I've never done a gloss clear before, and I think I'm a fan. I think that uh, it's gonna turn out really sweet. And then moving along to our completely painted tailgate. I didn't go crazy with the patina look. So, you know, you, you don't have to go crazy. You can just do a little. I didn't take much down to the metal. Again, just kind of where, where you grab your, your door to shut it and where the sun and water would beat down on it. This one I also sprayed with a satin. So this was a gloss and matte for the, from the Poppy Patina line. So the Poppy's Patina locks it in, man. So this is will hold up for years and years. It's also hydrophobic, so your water will, will bead right off of it. Demonstration, please. Look at that. And it's gone. Khalil, come wipe this up. <laughs> <laughs> What's also great about the Poppy's Patina is it makes it so you could wash your vehicle just like you would any other car. So you could use your microfiber rags. If you didn't clear it, your, your microfiber rags will go over all this rust area and it could leave you know, remnants of the rag back behind. All right, so I got all this stuff clear coated. All these parts are looking really cool on the table. But what looks better than parts sitting on a table is a fully patinaed C10. I'm gonna take you guys outside. I got your chink sitting out there. We're gonna go over that truck and we're gonna check out the patina on that thing. All right, so we got her outside in the sunshine. Just to kind of show you guys one last time. I was kind of briefly talking about like where you want to kind of show your patina. You know, there's a pickup truck. So, you know, you would think the guy is gonna be in and out of it working, maybe scratching it, leaning over it with his belt buckle. You know, on the step sides, he's gonna be stepping on this thing quite a bit. You know, these are all, all our leading edges where where the sun's gonna kind of beat on it. Obviously, this is the driver's door, so it's probably gonna get beat up a little bit more. You know, and then you can always take your patina to the next level. And we had our buddy Brendan from Quality Handmade Motorcycles come by, add some pinstriping. So, you know, a lot of people will say to you, hey man, when are you gonna paint that truck? You know, what I say, it's like painted parts cause stress, so. This is a finished product, and by adding little things like pinstriping, it, it kind of gives it a little bit more of a finished product. Uh. All right, well, you guys might be wondering why we did this whole episode on a patina. Well, here's why, man. Cha-Ching is leaving us today. We want to make sure that the legacy of Cha-Ching lives on. So get some spray paint, get some sanding blocks, get outside and get that patina going, man. All right, well that's a wrap on the patina episode. We gotta keep hammering away on this travel all because if we're gonna make it to LS Fest in two months, we have to get all the metal work done. We gotta get, we gotta drop that LS in. We gotta get it wired up. We gotta do the whole shebang in two months. So if y'all are interested in this project, make sure you're subscribed to the channel because we have a full build series coming out on this. Road to LS Fest East. So if you have any questions on how to patina, how to protect your patina, Please feel free to leave your questions in the comment section below. I'm gonna put a link to Poppy's Patina on the, on the description as well, so you guys can go on over to their website, check out all the stuff they have to protect your patina. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. We'll see you next time, peace.